Fixed form factor, modular chassis, Qumram MX, Jericho, Jericho Plus, Jericho 2, 10, 25, 100, 400 gigi with breakout cable or QSA, routing scale, timing, MAXEC, etc, etc, etc. The NTS 5500 family have seen addition of a lot of new members during the last three years. In September 2019, we have now 12 fixed routers, 3 modular chassis and 11 line cards. Today, we'll spend time on the NCS 5500 portfolio and we'll try to clarify all possible confusion. My name is Nicolas Février and I present regularly a deep dive on NCS 5500 at Cisco Live all around the world. This year, it appeared clearly that I was talking to two very different categories of audience. Some customers are extremely advanced in their understanding of the internal mechanisms used on these products, and they have deployed and operated them for many years. Some others are still struggling with different options offered by so many variations of the product. They are mixing the chipsets, the features, the scale, the port density, etc. This video targets this second category. It will be a long presentation, but we will split it in multiple sections. And if you are only interested in just one of them, take a look at the shortcuts in the description below. Today, we'll talk about the different ASICs powering each system, the different port types natively available, the port density, but also the alternative options, the FIP scale, the support of specific features like MaxSec or timing, will take different angles to answer most of your questions regarding the NCS 5500 family. Every time you hear me say dash SC, it means the ASIC is completed by an external TCAM or ETCAM. Each NPU is equipped with internal memories, LEM, LPM, FEC or EEDB, to list the most famous ones. The ETCAM is an optional resource used for additional routing scale and classifiers. You cannot add this ETCAM afterwards, it's not a field replaceable part. In a dash SC card or system, it's integrated in the PCB. Okay, let's take a look at the portfolio. The fixed form factor platforms. We should start explaining the logic behind the naming of these boxes. NCS55 represents the family. Then we have a third number or letter describing the internal ASIC. Today's options are 0 and A. 0 if we are using Jericho or Qumram MX. A if the box is using Jericho Plus. The letter Y here represents the rack units. Today it's only one or two. What comes afterward is describing the number of interfaces or modules. 36H is 36 port 100 gigi, 48Q for 48 port 25 gigi, mode is for the modular systems with MPA. Then we have the potential dash SE if we are using an external TCAM. And finally the dash S is for MaxSec capable system. Let's review these routers. NCS5501 and 5501SC, one rack unit, 40 or 48 ports SFP, 1 gig or 10 gig, and also 4 or 8 port QSFP for 40, 4x10 or 100 gig optics. It's powered by a single Qumram MX NPU. The non-SC5501 is slightly oversubscribed. NCS5502 and 5502SC, 2RU, 48 QSFP cages here, twice the size in terms of rack units, but six times more bandwidth and no native SFP ports, powered by eight Jericho NPUs interconnected with two fabric engine FE3600. NCS55A1, 36HS and 36HSCS, 1RU, 36 ports, that's 3.6 terabit per second, supporting MaxSec and powered by four Jericho Plus NPUs and a single FE3600. NCS55A124H, smaller version with 24 QSFP, no external TCAM, but with an internal memory that places it between the SC and the non-SC systems. No MaxSec and a small oversubscription in terms of bandwidth, powered by two Jericho Plus with large LPM connected back to back. NCS55A2 mode, first 40 port SFP fixed, and a third of them can also be used at 25 gig. Of course, all can do 1 or 10 gig. 
These ports are fixed and present in the bottom part. Above them we have two bays, optionally populated by MPAs. These modular port adapters will offer 1 slash 10 gig SFP, 100 gig Grey QSFP or 100 200 gig CFP2 ports. The NCS55A2 mode exists in multiple versions, scale or not, hardened or with conformal coating. All are powered by a single Jericho Plus and it's also slightly oversubscribed. The NCS55A2-24Q6HS, yes, 1RU48 port SFP, half of them capable of 25GB, all can support of course 1 and 10GB, plus 6 port QSFP, it's slightly oversubscribed, powered by a single Jericho Plus. NCS55A1-48Q6H looks very much like the former one. But this time all ports are 25 gig capable and the MPUs are not oversubscribed. Powered by a pair of Jericho Plus with large LPM and connected back to back. Regarding the chassis and the line cards, we have a large number of options too. We offer 4 slot, 8 slot and 16 slot chassis. In the front, the route processors. We have two generations, RP and RPE. The second one is mandatory if you want to enable timing features. Also, it consumes slightly less power. Otherwise, they are pretty similar. By the way, no idea why you would like to do something like this, but we don't support a mix of RP and RPE. It is not advised to use only one RP, even if I know customers doing it. But to guarantee process redundancy, NSF, NSR features, etc., you will need one active and one standby RP. In the back, we have two system controllers. A single generation exists, and here also we recommend to run the two of them in the system. Also in the back, we have the fan trays. Two versions are available. The V2 is mandatory if you insert V2 fabric cards, and they are also necessary for 400 gigi Ethernet line cards. Between the fan trays and the line card, we have the fabric cards. Here also we have two generations. Version 1 can be used for all line cards based on Jericho and Jericho Plus SX. Version 2 are mandatory to support Jericho 2 based line cards. That's the 400 gigi Ethernet ones. Of course, they are backward compatible and support all other existing line cards. Fabric cards and fan trays must be matched with the same generation. V1 with V1, V2 with V2. It's even written on it. You may be interested in V2 fabric cards and fan trays for multiple reasons. First, of course, to prepare the insertion of 400 gig Ethernet. Second, they consume a bit less power, so it could be beneficial from an OPEX perspective. You can mix and match all different type of LAN cards. 36H non-SC, that was the very first card we shipped in December 2015. 36 port QSFP that can be used with QSFP28 optics for 100 gig or with QSFP plus 4x10G breakout. Powered by 6 Jericho ASX, no ETCAM, only the internal memories. 24HSC, the second line card introduced on the market with 24 ports QSFP, a lower density compared to the former card, but this time with external TCAM, so it presents a larger routing scale. Internally, we have four Jericho NPUs. Then we launched the combo cards, 18H, 18F, and 24H, 12F, SC. They are 40 gig line cards by default, and it's possible to upgrade from 40 gig to 100 gig on half of the port on the first one and two thirds of the port on the second. Those cards have been used extensively to upgrade backbone smoothly from 10 gig to 100 gig. They are powered by three and four Jericho NPUs respectively. We also introduced a MaxSec card which is very similar to the first 36 port 100 gig with additional L2 encryption capability. It supports line weight encryption with no impact on performance. At the same time, we also add an IP over DWDM card with six ports CFP2 in the portfolio. It was the first card with ports non-QSFP. We have here CFP2 port SEO. SEO means the DSP is located on the LAN card and not inside the optics. The card is powered by two Jericho ASICs. Then the first Jericho Plus LAN cards have been introduced. 36 ports QSFP with extended scale. Since a Jericho Plus ASIC can forward 400 gigabit per second, we only need four of them for the same port density and we have now more room for external TCAM. Also, we can use a second generation for ETCAM. 
that extend the routing scale to more than 4 million prefixes v4. The next two cards are following the same logic than the 55A2 mode. They offer 12 fixed ports SFP, 2 fixed port QSFP+, plus, so 40 gig, and 2 bays 4 MPAs and 400 gig each, and exist in both SC and non-SC versions. Finally, we recently announced two new line cards with QSFP DD ports for 400 gigabit Ethernet. They are also the first cards powered by two Jericho 2 NPUs, and they exist with or without ETCAM with different port density. If you want more details, we have a dedicated video on this topic too. That's a lot, and I agree that could be confusing. So let's try to clarify all these options now and take different parameters to categorize them. Let's get started with the forwarding ASICs. I will call them alternatively ASICs or NPUs. In this context, these subtleties are not relevant. We use the DNX products in the NCS 5500 family. They are produced by Broadcom and they exist in multiple flavors and multiple architectures. Tenderloin, Leaf and Spine, Back to Back, and even Mesh, but we are not using this option in any of our products. They are made of two cores for most of them, with the exception of the Qumram AX used in NCS 540 and the Jericho 2C we plan to use in the near future. Very logically, packets are received in the ingress pipeline and they will always exit the router through the egress pipeline. They are made of blocks and sub-blocks, each one having a specific role in the packet processing and the queue management. Each block has access to multiple resources where it can read and write a certain amount of times. Everything gives a very predictable performance. Regardless of the features we apply or the FIB size, as long as a packet does not recirculate, the number of packets per second will be consistent. It's a significant difference compared to run to completion or similar type of ASICs. Quick note, the ASIC used in the NCS 5000s are also produced by Broadcom, but they are different from the one in the NCS 500 and NCS 5500. In the 5000s, we use XGS products with a very high bandwidth and port density, but lower routing scale and significantly smaller buffer. Back to the pipelines. For both ingress and egress, we will have two large blocks. One for the packet processing, destination lookup and all the features like filters, net flows, etc. And the other for traffic management, covering the QS and packet scheduling, among other things. The packets are stored in different places. It could be inside the ASIC most of the time, but also it could be on an external buffer in certain congestion situations. I invite you to check this video here if you want to get into the details of the packet buffering mechanisms. Qumram MX, Jericho, Jericho Plus are using GDDR5 memory. And this graphical memory is often referred to as DRAM. With Jericho 2, we will use HBM, which is like a directly connected memory if you want. These packets memory are just here. They are not optional, so it's not a significant parameter we will use to differentiate the products between each other. It's not the case for external TCAM. These optional memories are here to extend the resource present inside the chipset. We are not storing packets in these internal databases, but only information, routes, labels, next stop addresses, load balancing information, encapsulation, adjacency, counters, and much more. The external TCAM will increase the scale for routing and classifiers, and even counters in the latest NPUs. In our portfolio, Qumram MX is used only in the NCS 5501. Note, it is also used in access products like the NCS 560, but there are some differences. Packet memory first, it's GDDR5 for 5501, while it's DDR4 in the 560. Then ETCAM, we use NL12K for 5501, and they use Optimus Prime for the 560. We are not using Jericho ASICs in standalone mode, but we have many products using Jericho NPUs interconnected through Fabric Engine FE3600. For example, in the 5502s. And they are also present in the line cards, like the 36x100 non-SC, the 24x100SC, the two combo card, the MaxSeg card, and the coherent six port CFP2. The Jericho Plus in standalone mode is used in 55A2 mode, fixed systems, 
and in the 55A2 24Q6HS. Also, we use them in back-to-back -back mode in the 55A1-24H and the 55A1-48Q6H with a large LPM version. We use Jericho Plus in Leaf and Spy mode interconnected with FE3600 in the 55A1-36H SE or non-SE and in the 36x100 SC line cards, but also in the modular line cards. Finally, the Jericho 2 are only used today in the 400 gig line cards and they are interconnected through a new generation of fabric engines named FE9600 or Ramon. Okay, is it getting a bit clearer? Well, at least I hope so. Don't hesitate to take a look at the blog post on xhardocs.io. You will find this chart here. It's a very good summary. Let's try another angle to differentiate these products. This time, it will be based on the type of ports they support. It's actually a vast topic and we have a very convenient matrix to track what kind of interface is supported per product and release. It goes in a lot of details. To summarize, the NCS 5500 routers offer SFP, QSFP and CFP2 port slots, depending on the model. I would like to differentiate the port or the cage and the optics or the modules. The first is hosting the second. For example, in a QSFP port, I can insert a QSFP28 module for 100 gig or 4x25, or a QSFP plus for 40 gig or 4x10, or a QSA for 1 gig or 10 gig. Some QSFP cages are able of QSFP plus 400 gig only, while others are more capable supporting higher speeds, 100 gig, or lower speed like 10 gig via an adapter. What I really mean to say here is that optics are defining the speed, but the cage could limit the type of optics you can insert. One last comment before going through the options. Naming of the port. All the ports are described with two letters, then a series of four or five numbers. The letters describe the interface type. HU for 100 gig, FO for 40, TF for 25, TE for 10. The first number describes the chassis. Since we don't support multi-chassis in the NCS 5500 family, it will always be zero. The second number represents a slot in the chassis. It starts from zero on the top and increases slot by slot to the bottom. On a fixed system, it will always be zero. The third number is for the MPS slot only. So it will be NCS 55A2 mode and the mode line cards. The fixed port will be zero and the two MPAs will be one and two. The fourth number represents the port. It starts from left to right, beginning at zero. Finally, the last digit is optional and only used with breakout cables, from zero to three. Let's start from the largest interfaces available and go smaller and smaller. First, the 400 gig. They will be available via QSFP DD ports. Today, it's on these two line cards only. Breakout from 400 to 100 gig could be challenging since you need a specific PAM 400 gig technology on the other side. On the NC5524 DD card, all the ports are 400 gig capable. On the NC5518 DDSC, it's a bit more complicated. So I invite you to check the video appearing here. 200 gig with QSFP DD28 instead of 56, will support 200 gig and breakout of twice 100 gig, but compatible with existing SR4, LR4, and CWDM4 technologies. You can insert this optics in all the ports of the 24DD and the 18DDSC. Some limitations exist. They are all described in the blog post we published with the former video. 100 gigabit Ethernet will be supported on QSFP ports with two notable exceptions, the IP over DWDM ports and the breakout of QSFP DD28 that could offer twice 100 gig but on all others, it will be with QSFP28 optics. The NCS5501 have six ports QSFP on the right part of the front. Note that this box is oversubscribed by design. So among the six ports, we can forward only 400 gig at the same time, since they are connected to a single core of the Comram MX. The NCS5500SC, it's four ports on the right and no oversubscription. By the way, if I don't mention it, it means the router is not oversubscribed. NCS 5502SC or non-SC, we have 48 ports that can receive QSFP28 modules. NCS 55A136H, SC or non-SC, it's the same logic. We have 36 ports, all of them ready for QSFP28. NCS 55A124H, 
Here again, it's very simple. 24 ports, all 100 gig capable. We have an oversubscription ratio of 12 to 9 here. 55A1-24Q6H offers 6 ports on the right and some other subscription here too. 55A1-48Q6H, we have 6 ports on the right but not oversubscribed this time. And finally, the NCS55A2 mode variants. 100 gig is available with the MPAs. This 4x100 gig gray port and the combo card 2x100 plus 200 gig DWDM. The 200 gig CFP2 DCO can be used at 100 gig 2, but of course it's high PV DWDM here and not gray. In the line cards, we have 36x100 SC or non SC, the MaxSec line card. All the 36 ports are 100 gig capable. Same for the 24x100 gig SC. All the 24 ports support QSFP modules. In the combo card, only a portion of the ports can be used with QSFP28 optics. They are identified with a green on the front plate. Half of the port for the 18H18F and two thirds of the ports on the 24H12F SC. On the DWDM card, we support 200 gig, 150 and 100 gig, but of course here, no gray ports, only coherent. On this one, we only support CFP2 SEO optics. On the modular line card, we have QSFP ports on the right part, but they are only QSFP plus 40 gig capable, not 100 gig. For QSFP 28, it's only via the MPAs and the same modules described earlier. Finally, you can also insert QSFP 28 optics in the 24DD and 18DD SC cards. From the same ports, you can also potentially break out to 4x25 gig Ethernet, but we will come back on this topic in a couple of minutes since there are some limitations. Regarding the 40 gig options, it's very simple. On all the routers and LAN cards, not all QSFP cages are QSFP 28 capable, but the support of QSFP Plus is general. Here again, we'll come back on this with more details in the 10 gig section, but keep in mind these ports can be broken in 4x 10 gig SR and LR. Now, let's cover the 25 gigabit Ethernet. The first option we have is via native SFP28 ports. We don't support them on the 5501 or 5501 SC, but we do on all the SFP ports of the 55A1-48Q6H and half of the port of the 24Q6HS. They are identified in yellow on the front panel. And finally, on the 16 last SFP fixed ports of the NCS 55A2 mode. Note that the MPA with SFP ports are only 1 gig and 10 gig capable, so they don't support SFP28. On the free routers I just listed, the ports are activated in block of 4, something we call quad. By default, the ports are configured in 25 gig mode. You can see it on the CLI output with the latest TF used to describe the interface position. If you insert a 1 gig or 10 gig optic, it will not be recognized. You need to configure the quad in 10 gig mode. That makes a block of four ports now 1 gig and 10 gig capable. That also implies you can only plug an SFP and SFP plus on these four ports but no longer SFP28 optics. It's something important to understand to properly plan your port allocation. The second option for 25 gig Ethernet is a breakout. We only support it on the systems and LAN cards powered by Jericho Plus NPUs. Not Jericho, not Qumram MX. So it will be on the 55A136H, SC non SC, on the 55A124H, on the 55A124Q and 48Q6H, on the 55A2 mode with the 4x100 gig MPAs. On the line card side, it will be on the 36x100 gig SC and on the mode with the same MPAs. Now, let's talk about 10 gig ports. All SFP slots support SFP plus 10 gig optics. Natively, the 55A1s, SC or not, offers 40 and 48 ports respectively. Note that we don't support high power optics on the 55A1 non-SC. We do support them on the SC version, but only on the specific ports identified in purple. By high power, I mean 3.5 watts, like ZR or DWDM. On the 55A2, 24Q and 48Q6H, we have 48 ports SFP. On the 55A2 mode, it's 40 ports fixed. That can be completed by two MPAs of 12 ports each. 
so potentially up to 64 ports 10 gig. On the line card side, 10 gig is only available on the mod ones that have 12 fixed ports, but also you can complete them with two MPAs of 12 ports for a total of 36 SFP+. The second option is to use breakout cables with QSFP+, 4x10 gig optics. Certain ports, like SR4, can be both 40 gig and 4x10 gig natively. We just need a specific cable and the appropriate configuration to enable it. There is no limitation on the breakout. They don't need to be grouped in blocks of contiguous ports. The configuration doesn't require a reload or a reset of the card. You can add them to bundles and they support QS as individual interfaces. A third option is to offer 10 gig via QSA. It stands for QSFP to SFP adapter. As the name implies, it permits SFP and SFP plus ports inserted in a QSFP cage. It seems to be a waste of resource at first glance. 90% or even 99%. But it makes a lot of sense if you consider the cost to acquire and operate an extra device for just a couple of 1 gig and 10 gig ports. Also, it could be your only solution if you need a reach longer than 40 kilometers. The speed could be seen as an acceptable trade-off over long dark fiber. We support QSC on the following line cards. 36 by 100 gig SC and SC, 24 by 100 gig SC, 24H 12F SC combo card, but we don't support it on the 18H 18F, the MaxEC card, or the DD LAN cards. On the pizza box, we support it on the 5502 and SC, the 55A136H SC, and the 55A124H. Take a close look at the compatibility matrix since some subtleties are present, like the non support of dash S optics or some systems not supporting ZR or ER. What about 1 gig Ethernet? Well, here there is too many variations between the native SFP ports, the QSA options, so I prefer the lazy approach and I will point you to the matrix, it will be much easier and faster. One thing I should mention, certainly obvious, but since I got the questions many times, it is worth reminding that you cannot get 1 gig behind a QSFP plus breakout. It is only 10 gig Ethernet. Also, two quick exceptions that could be of interest regarding the 1 gig. On the 5501SC router, the ports 0A2015 don't support Fast Ethernet Copper SFP modules, GLCT, and we don't support Autoneg on the 1 gig optical SFP. Other ports support 1 gig with Autoneg and fast Ethernet speeds, and no limitations on the 48 ports of the 5501. The second exception to keep in mind in the 12 SFP ports MPA, only 8 do support 1 gig. It's not available in ports 4 to 7. That's it for the type of ports available on the NCS 5500. Are you still with me? Let's try to compare now the different options based on the routing scale. So, a quick reminder first. The routing information is stored in different places inside and outside the NPU. Inside the Jericho, Qumram MX and Jericho Plus, we have two memories used to store prefixes the LEM and the LPM. The LEM is used for exact match of a certain prefix length. It can store up to 784,000 routes. The LPM is used for variable length match and exists in two flavors. In some Jericho and Jericho Plus, it can store more or less 350,000 routes. But in some variant of Jericho Plus, it can store more or less 1.5 million routes. So I say more or less because it's directly dependent on the prefix distribution. A third place can be used to store routing tables, the external TCAM. Yes, that's the eTCAM present on the dash E systems and line cards that we talked about. In Jericho, the external TCAM can store 2 million extra V4 prefixes. In Jericho Plus, it's a different eTCAM that can handle 4 million V4 routes. So the route will be stored in LEM, LPM and or eTCAM, depending on the type of cards, but also depending on the address family and the prefix length. When we claim 1.5 million or 2.75 million route, it actually represents the sum of all the memory capabilities if the tables were defined ideally to occupy all the space available. So we can sort now 
the platform based on their routing capability. First level, 1 million prefixes, split in 784k in LEM and around 350k in LPM. That's the scale for NCS 5501, 55A136H, 55A2 mode, 55A124Q6H, and the LAN card, 36 by 100 gig Nanticam, 36 by 100 gig Maxec, 18H18F, 6 by 200 gig IP WDM, and finally the modular LC non ETCAM. 2.2 million prefixes, that's the second level, split in 784K in LEM and around 1.5 million in LPM. That's the scale we can get on the 55A124H and the 55A148Q6H. Third level, 2.75 to 3 million prefixes, split in 784K in LEM. 160k IPv6 in LPM and 2 million IPv4 in LEM. That's a Jericho with ETCAM systems like the 5501SC, 5502SC and the line cards 24x100GB SC and 24H12FSC. Last level, 4 million prefixes. All moved to the ETCAM. That's a Jericho Plus systems with external ETCAM like the pizza boxes 55A136HSC. 55A2 mode SC, or the line card 36 by 100 gig SC and the modular one SC. Okay, do you want another angle? Let's try a different way to classify the routers and we can pick the features requiring specific hardware. For example, MaxSec. It's not supported on the 5501 or 5502, but it's on the 55A2 mode. MaxSec is available on the fixed ports from 23 to 39, but not on the first 23. It is also supported in all the MPA ports. We don't have MaxSec on the 55A124H, but it is on all the ports of the 55A136H, SC or not. On the 55A124Q6H, MaxSec is available on the last 16 SFP ports, and on the 48Q6H, MaxSec is only available on the QSFP ports, on the line cards. We have it only on the 36 by 100 gig MaxSec, the 6 port 200 gig IP over DWDM, and the modular line cards. On the last ones, it's both on the fixed ports and on the MPA ports. Finally, it is not supported either on the 400 gig, the DD cards. Let's take another family of features directly dependent on the hardware, the timing functions, sync key, and all the flavors of PTP. It is supported on the 5501 SC but not on the 5501. Actually, with the exception of the 5501SC based on Qumram MX, none of the systems powered by Jericho support timing. It's only on Jericho Plus. We have it on the 55A2 mode systems, A136H, 24H, 24Q, or 48Q6H. In the chassis, it's mandatory to use two RPEs first, and then it is supported on the 36 by 100 gig SC, and the two mode line cards. It will also come on the DD line cards, but it will be later on. So, is it getting a bit clearer? We are covering the portfolio left and right using different angles of comparison. Let's try another one. For some specific use cases, the size of the system is very important, particularly the depth. So let's sort the routers by size, from the smallest depth to the largest. The smallest routers we have are the 55A2 mode systems, 28 cm deep. Then with 55 cm we have the 24Q and 6H, the 5501 and 55A124H. With 68 cm deep we have the 55A1 and 48Q6H. With 76 cm we have the 5502, 55A136H, SC non SC. And finally the chassis, 8, 4 or 16 slot. They are all 88 centimeters from the line card ejector to the fan tray handle, but for the Jericho base line cards, Jericho 2s are a bit larger. Okay, that was a very long one, but I'm sure you understand what we tried to do. We receive all these questions on NPUs, on port density, on features, on size, and we try to gather all this knowledge in just one single place. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any question, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section and see you very soon.
the so the, the 55 a the 55 a1 24h is powered by two jericho plus mp